So we've got a great irony here. Uh, when Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web, it was meant to be open and open was good. You could go anywhere. You could see anything. Anybody could do any of this because it was point and click simple. It was just, just absolutely genius. Uh, the problem is that, as it turns out, open incentivizes evil. And let me tell you what I mean by that. Um, AOL had everything that Facebook has today, except for the imagination to be evil. They had a, they had essentially a walled garden of the Internet where they could, had they chosen to, uh, track every click kept records of every conversation, whether it was in a, a public chat room or a private message. They had all of this. And in, 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 instead of data mining the way Facebook did, they just showed some banner ads and took your 12 bucks a month or whatever it was. Um, I'm not saying Steve Case was a better person than Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, maybe he just lacked the, uh, the evil imagination to exploit his users the way that Mark Zuckerberg has done over at Facebook. But openness has made it possible. And again, this is this is a great example of the law of unintended consequences. What openness has allowed is this data mining, this data harvesting that turns you into the product. And, you know, we joke about this a lot or even warn people about this a lot, that if you're getting a service for free on the Internet, you're the product. But think about that. Think about the morality of being somebody else's product. You're a human being that's been reduced to an inanimate object. You're a widget. You are somebody else's thing to exploit um, and, and to use. That is pure evil, and it is built on the goodwill that was the openness of Internet 1.0. Internet 2.0 can't get here fast enough. We just say for the record that I don't know a single thing about Steve Case. I assume he was uh, the president of AOL. I know nothing about yes. him. But the one thing I can tell you is that he's a better person than Mark Zuckerberg. That's one <laughs> thing I can absolutely state with confidence. Um, there is a, a, a form of technology uh, called blockchain, and it, it basically is an, an, an unbreakable code. It's not a difficult to break code. It's It's unbreakable. And blockchain has been talked about for quite a long time. And to give you just a very, very quick example of the power of blockchain, if if YouTube, where you're watching this now almost certainly, if YouTube was operated um, using blockchain, then Google could not censor our videos because Google couldn't see our videos. YouTube couldn't see our videos. They would not be able to view them. The only people who can view them would be the people we issued the key to. This technology has been here for quite a while and is becoming mature. But basically, I had said to myself, the one thing that I would take from a second term of a Trump administration, I'd give up the wall, I'd give up everything. I'd give up a couple of aircraft carrier battle groups for this in order to break up big tech. Well, Joe Biden's administration is not going to break up big tech. That that big tech did an awful lot of downfield blocking for, for the Biden administration. He's not going to break them up. But it is a relief to know that there are forces even more powerful than, than a combination of, of cartels, politics, and all the rest. And that is the occasional um, uh, emergence of a person who's got the intelligence, the morality, and the backing to create a, pro a product and, and somebody who is incorruptible to the degree that he could be bought off clearly – by, by, by people who could write the biggest checks on the planet. You know, think about that for one second when you think about Mr. Berners-Lee. The largest checks on the planet, the largest bribes imaginable in human history could and I'm sure have been offered to him. And he said, no, we're going to basically do it again. When this happens, all of the people who feel like they've been cheated and, and corrupted and and, and and taken advantage of are going to flock to this to this internet version 2.0 and then uh, Zuckerberg and Google and 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 what's his name Malibu bin Laden on Twitter and all the rest of them uh, are 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 going to be left out in the cold and they're going to have no one to blame but themselves and then when information is actually freely available then we might actually have a chance to start seeing some justice uh, return to this world uh, which has been locked out 
of our society by the uh, chains that we fettered for ourselves when we decided to allow people we'd never met uh, invite us onto their private property and then set up our residences there, not knowing a single thing about them and not knowing when they decide to throw us into chains because we walked in their door and we paid them to be there. For